what's the soil that's in your heart today? What do we got to do to get our soil to the place where we can have that 30, 60, and 100 full fruit? Is anybody looking to have that happen? Or is it too much work? Now, I want to look at, we're, I'm going to start reading through this sets of verses out of Mark chapter 4. Verse 2 says, Then he taught them many things by parables. And he said to them in his teaching, Listen. Now, just when I say the word listen, I, I hope you're listening not only from your ears, but from your heart's ears. Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. Six, but when the sun was up, it scorched, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. How many want to have root? How many want to get that seed down so it's going to produce something? Come on. Verse 7, and some seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop, but other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprung up, increased, and produced some 30, some 60, and 100. And he said to them, do, not, do you not understand? He who has ears to hear, let him hear. I want to have those ears on today. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you has, it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those on the outside, all things come in parables. So that seeing they may not see and perceive, and hearing they may not hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How will you understand all the parables? And the sower sows the word. Father, I thank you this morning that we're listening from our heart's ears. We're choosing to understand. We're making an effort, God, to want to know your word so that the word is planted in our hearts. Now, I want to look at a few things here. Uh, we're going to go through it with 15, but I just want to say a few things here. Uh, parables were not to hide things from us. Parables were to hide things from the world. Lest they take the word of God and are able to figure out ways to manipulate it. So unless you've got a heart, a right heart, a God's heart, a person that's a believer, you will try to take the word and manipulate it. It's just kind of, so he didn't hide his word from us, but he hid his word for us. How many say he hid his word for us? Come on here. And, and so he wants you to know, and those that seek God and seek his word, the word is going to keep coming to you, and it's going to continue to be revealed. Now, this other part that I read that always challenged me was it, it said here, it's seeing they might not see and perceive, hearing they may hear and not understand, lest they turn and their sins be forgiven. I'm thinking, well, God, don't you want unbelievers to be forgiven also? And so I read another verse, Denise found, and this is in the uh, Ben Campbell Johnson. How many know there's so many different versions that you can receive from? And this is out of 1315. You know, 4 and 13 are the same thing. They're talking about the parable of the sower. And in verse 15 there, it said, this people's inner sensitivity has become numb. And their inner awareness has become vague. They don't see the true meaning of things because if they should really see and truly hear and how intuitively, they would be transformed and made whole. Now, God doesn't want people that don't know him to be able to understand this. They want them to get the word and say yes to it and believe in Jesus and be saved. And then that word can start being multiplied in their heart. But he doesn't want the world to get full understanding of it. Can you imagine if the world fully knew what Jesus was going to the cross? It looked like they were winning, but the truth was Jesus going to the cross made God win, made us win. Or they'd have tried to stop him being crucified. They didn't know that he was the sacrifice that saved us all because they didn't have that insight. Now let's look at verse 15. Let's move on here. 
And these are the ones by the wayside. And wayside would be another word for hard path, hard packed ground. Where the word is sown, then they hear Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their heart. I don't know if we got a picture of those. How many of those birds want to come by there, which represents Satan? And people that have a hardened heart, the word is still sown, but because of the hardness of their heart, it's not allowed to take root. And so the enemy comes by and steals it. That's not like anybody in here, right? We, we haven't allowed our hearts to, get, hearts to get hard. And then it says, 16, these likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. How many have met those people? Man, they came to a conference, they heard the word, and they got so excited about the word that they heard. How many know those people? How many were some of those people? But then it says here, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure for a time afterwards when tribulation and persecution arise for what? The word's sake. Immediately they stumble. All of us have been in this place where we heard the word, we were excited, maybe somebody, we heard about a miracle and we were excited about it, but because we didn't allow that seed to take root in our heart, persecution and affliction came because it was trying to get the word out that you had planted. You know, it seems like I remember a time in my life where I was really standing on the word to walk in health. I remember a time in around January of every year where I would get the flu. And I remember, I mean, that mucus and all that stuff, I don't want to gross you out, and it would happen, and I'd have it for a week, and I'd be praising God and thanking God, but I still had it, and eventually I gave in and went and got antibiotics. Now, I'm not saying to you that it's wrong to go out and get medicine or antibiotics, but I was trying to come through. Next year, same thing come around. And, you know, I started getting my sore throat, and I knew the signs were there. And, you know, I'd been prepared because all the commercials said, this is flu season. <laughs> Seeds you don't want to be receiving. Who's out there? Come on. I mean, all the stuff we watch, seeds are being planted. What you're watching, what you're listening to, seeds are being planted. And so they tried to steal from me. There was one time I heard Andrew share in his early days that he was sick, and he was so sick that he got down on the floor and he pushed the Bible around with his nose, quoting scriptures. In the name of Jesus, I am healed. By your stripes, I'm healed. And he kept doing it because he just knew. See, there's a time when you're first getting the word, whether it be finances, whether it be healing and wholeness, that you're going to be challenged because the devil knows that in that area, if that seed gets planted, you're going to be something to deal with. Who's out there? And, and so when that's happening, you don't need to quit. That's what the enemy wants to do. You need to press in all the more that the word of God is true. And then there are certain areas that you didn't have to mess with anymore because you have got a crop in that area that says, I am healed. Who's with me now? But maybe in another area of finances or whatever it may be, when people come and mess with you, you want to smack them, you know, and you're trying to release that forgiveness that it's not about you. It's not about what they're doing. They would do that to anybody that came to word. So you're putting the word of God in your heart, what he says about it. When Jesus said, Father, forgive them for what they do. <laughs> you know, they know not what they do. See, now Jesus overcame in that area. That wasn't going to be an area. He tried to tempt him, tried to get him, but no. So we're talking about, are you going to let the word that you've been planted with persecution comes or affliction comes, steal it from you? See, now that you know this truth, you're going to fight a little harder, aren't you? Enemy tries to get that. When you start to get a little head financially, and then all of a sudden you take a little step back, and the enemy says, uh-uh, ah, ah, see, it doesn't work. You shouldn't be trusting. No, come on, bless God. I am blessed to be a blessing. See, and we got to get it in our heart. we got to replace all those things that the enemy tried to put in. But I'm not going to let persecution and affliction have its way anymore to steal the word out of my heart. Are you with me? Verse 18. Now, these are the ones sown among the thorns. They're the ones who hear the word. But the cares of this world. Anybody have cares of this world? 
got to come their way. Am I the only one that has those cares come of this world? Deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things entering in to choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Look at that little weed trying to choke out that seed. Come on, cares of this world. Now, we think about the cares of this world. I don't know about you, but cares come. Cares come to try to distract us, to get us off base. Problems come. That's why we always have to cast cares. I don't know about you, but sometimes I got to do a daily care casting party because the weight of things, the weight of the building, things going on, how are we going to take care of this? I've got to say, no, those are the cares of this world, God. How do you want to handle this? This is your stuff anyway. How many have ever been tempted to get rich quick? Come on, you know, you go and buy those lottery tickets, and this is the one, Jesus. Give me that number. You're down at the casino. Come on, Jesus, as you roll those things there. <laughs> See, and we have this tendency to think God's going to give us some kind of secret thing other than his word to prosper us. Come on. And so, and so for a while, we're kind of drawn away, and then we see that didn't work, and maybe it wasn't God, so we have to come back again and kind of start over, if it will. I mean, you know, God, in him, we are blessed. We're not trying to get blessed, right? I knew a guy that uh, he was in prison for a long time, and when he got out, he thought he could figure out our system so he could catch back up for all those years that he lost. I mean, it just turned into more turmoil and heartache for him. So we're not trying to play the slot machine in the name of Jesus to see how we can get ahead. We're saying that in him, come on, I live and move and have my being. He is my prosperity. He is my blessing. And so if I let the word come in, it will produce fruit in and of itself. Cares, you're not going to steal from me anymore. Thorns, you're not going to come into my life anymore. So now that you see this, and you know you feel yourself going that way, say, no, can't do that. Can't let these storms choke out what I've planted. We're going to water this stuff. Are you with me? Yes. Now, as we go on here, verse 19, in the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, the desires for other things enter in to choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. It's not going to happen anymore, Lord, because I'm looking to you. But these are the ones that are sown. Now, this is what I want to hear about. These are the ones that are sown on good ground. Somebody say good ground. Good ground. Those who hear the word and accept it. I accept it. I receive it. I might not understand it right now, God, but if your word says it, I accept it. See, if you get into the realm of you only accept it if you can understand it, somebody can come along with a better explanation of something else and you're going to be on over here. You know, there's all kinds of negative doctrines. There's all kinds of things out there to pull people away. I know personal people, people that were friends of mine that have been drawn away into universalism because a thorn came and, and stuck them. And they, because of that pain, they, they couldn't go this way. They had to say, no, this sounds like a better thing for me. But this says here, but these are the ones sown on good ground. They hear the word, they accept it, they bear fruit, some 30, 60, and some 100 fold. How many like that word, 100 fold? You know, I often thought I want 99 fold because it said 100 fold came with persecution. And I thought, could I get 99 fold and skip the persecution? But it says, also, he said to them, is a lamp brought to be Put under a basket or under a bed? How many of you hide your lights, hide your lamp? Come on. And it says, is it not to be set on a lampstand? For there's nothing hidden that will not be revealed. Nor has anything been kept secret that should not come to light. I want to say something to you. I don't know about you, but then, haven't you found out over time stuff eventually comes out. Is it, you found that? And to try to live with something that's been a secret your whole life, man, about each up anyway. I found out 
with the devil even, when he's challenged me, when he questions me, when he uses fear of some time to try to come against me. I've found it's best to say, come on, you want some of this? I've found out that the fear of what might happen, that fear, all those, those years, whatever, is actually worse than if it actually happened. At least you'd be able to deal with it and it'd be over with. So it's, come on, let's bring it. Let's bring that thing that you think that you're using this fear against me, and then it won't, you won't be able to use it against me because we called you on it. Let's just bring it out here. See what happens. Now, he says in 23, if anyone has ears to hear, anybody here got ears? Anybody has ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to them, take heed what you hear. I'm going to say this to you. Every day we're hearing things. Take heed what you hear, what you're listening to, what you're giving the permission to plant seeds in your heart and in your mind. With the same measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And you shall hear, and more will be given. Whosoever has to him, more will be given. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Now, I want to give this to you. Let me jump down to Matthew 13, 12, because it's saying the same thing. Whoever has, to him more will be given. And he will have an abundance. How many, it's talking about the word. If you have the word, if you're putting the word in there, you're going to get more of it. If you go through a time in your life when you stop planting the word, you become spiritually retarded for a while. Are you with me? There is a time when you, ah, I've read the word for a while, I don't need it for a while anymore. What you've just done to he who has more will be given. Yeah. See, the more you get, the more you get. But who who has not, even what you had or used to know, all of a sudden the spirit of stupid comes over you. It's like, I don't know, but I just don't know that anymore, and I don't get it. And we are the ones that choose to what degree we want to have sown. Let me, let me look at this just a little bit further, because I, I want to, there was something I was wanting to, Say through this, to he who has, more will be given. And then it says here, I want to look at to the measure. Somebody say to the measure. Come on. The measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Of course, we know the scripture pressed down, shaken together, running over. How many want to use a little bit of word? You, to the degree you measure, you put a little word in, you're going to get more back. How many say, hey, you know, I, I'm going to, to this degree, to this measure, I'm going to put in more because it's going to be measured according to what I put in. It's going to be measured more back to me than what I put in. So if I start putting out a bigger measure... I'm going to get more back. And then for those wild people that say, I'm going to use a big measure, you could have the dump truck back up, come on, and I'm going to put a bunch in there because I, whatever I measure I use, I get it measured back to me more than what I put. Press down, shaking together, running over. So if I'm thinking... You know, I'm going to start putting the word like a dump truck in me. I'm going to let it get rooted. And I have no excuse but to back up. Andrew Walmack started out uh, with a ministry where he started giving away cassette tapes. I mean, they, they were so poor they couldn't pay attention. I, I mean, they would have to believe God for somebody to bring meals by to their house for them to eat. But he chose to keep putting the word in him, the word in, the word in him. And it's not that he's smart enough to figure out all that happened. He actually will tell you I'm not smart enough to do all that's happened here. But when you go and come and see this 3,100-seat auditorium, after he built about a 1,000-seater over here called the barn, and all the projects and the parking garages and the student uh, facilities that are going to be able to stay there, 
and this enormous property. And then they bought another piece of property because God told them to. 100 acres they just got a deal on to the point that his CEO, which was, is, a, is a very wealthy man, he was freaking out. He was freaking out. It started affecting his health. Because about the time they got one thing, they were getting paid for. Andrew said, God spoke something to me. And he goes, oh, Jesus. <laughs> but the other day, we got to see that man stand up in front of everybody. And he said, and, and he explained what happened. And then he said, here's what I do know. Every time God shows something to Andrew, God provides for it. So my job as CEO is to help him figure out different sources that's going to come through and do it and not get to the place like, oh, God, how are we going to do this? See, because you can be a very wealthy person and still be calculating, still be trying to figure out how it's all going to work. And I'm not saying there shouldn't be some wisdom and budgeting in that, but when you roll with a guy like Andrew, and I think I even told us this church a couple weeks ago when we were able to sit with him down at Charlotte and ask him a few questions. And we said, I said, Andrew, how is the faith that you had when you first started different than the faith you have to have now with all this stuff you've built and done? He said, actually, there is no difference. He said, there's just more zeros involved. Now, now when you hear that, God, to him, it's no difference whether you're believing for 10 bucks, 100 bucks, or you're believing for 100 million bucks. It's no different on God's, and there's just a few more zeros. And somehow we think it's a little harder when there's more zeros. Don't we? Because we've been conditioned that way. Because we've looked at our own work and our own effort and what we could produce by it. And so what Andrew's done is he's looked at what God can produce. And he's totally trusted him in that way. And, and it's just amazing how he stands up and says this stuff. And next thing you know, they're doing it. They've got all these projects in the world right now that they're doing, that they're building. So I can determine, that will be determined by the measure of the word that I'm putting in my heart. Who wants to put a little bit of word in your heart and just get a little bit back? Come on. Or do you want to put a bigger lot in? I mean, I'm not telling you to jump to a dump truck if you haven't even done a cut before. You got to go. It's a process. But the word determines the fruit. And let me go to say something else here. Let me move down here a little bit. Uh, as I start getting more, God shows me more. Let me give you an example, a couple examples. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, this is the scripture that threw a lot of us off. And we thought, wow. The Hebrews here were starting to go back to the law. And as they were going back to the law, what this verse is saying here. If you sin willfully after having the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice. Once it crossed over, Jesus was our sacrifice. That is the sacrifice that you have for everything. You can't go back to the Old Testament and sacrifice lambs and goats and bulls anymore. Don't go, you can't, they're no longer, that sacrifice no longer remains. But the sacrifice is Jesus is now once and for all for our sins and we're forgiven. It was like God showed me that thing as I was looking there, and he wanted to give it to me. But sometimes we want to jump from one little penny to a million dollars in a moment, and you've got to go along the process and be growing and having stuff line upon line established. Then stuff started coming out. You know, you know I remember Thomas said something about Donald Trump. But do you know that as this election started getting closer, God had a plan. And he didn't raise up a preacher. He didn't raise up a rabbi. He didn't raise up some spiritual figurehead. But he raised up a businessman. And I'll be honest with you, when, he, when I first heard Donald Trump was running, I thought it was a joke at first. Anybody here? We were all like, look at this guy, you know, mouthy businessman, you know. And we've seen him through the years and on talk shows and all kinds of crazy stuff, and his background wasn't the best we knew about. But then some guy by the name of Lance Walnow came up. And Lance, God was showing him that Isaiah 45, God raised up 
a king there. What's the name of the king? And Cyrus wasn't even a Jew. And God used King Cyrus to deliver the Jewish people in that time. And he showed him that this same representative of Cyrus and the 45th president, which was the one we've got right now, was going to be Donald Trump. And he was going to be a wrecking ball to political correctness. So, see, wisdom comes. Understanding comes when you start planting the word in your heart and he starts revealing things to you. I mean, how many were blessed by the fact that this president brought home a pastor who's been two years in an Iranian prison? And then had him on TV and letting this man get on his knees and pray for Donald Trump. I saw that with my own eyes there. Now, who does this stuff? Unless this is a man that God is using. Do you know Kim Clement? Have you ever heard of Kim Clement? He was, he's a prophet, but he passed away several years back. Well, before he passed away, was he actually supposed to be meeting with Trump? Two days before, Two days before but he, he, he had a stroke and he couldn't meet with him. And he had a few words back there that said something like this. God is going to be blowing a trumpet in the White House. How many have heard that? And he also had another word that said, the devil is trying to put a witch in the White House. Now, now I don't want to get political here. I just want to show you that we take, we try to figure it all out, and God makes the wisdom of this world foolishness to the things of God. And, And so for you to get this, what we're talking about here is the more you put in, come on, the more you get. You want more revelation? Keep putting in the word that's giving you revelation. Come on now. Now, I want to look at a couple other things here. What is the difference between good soil and bad? Well, if you look at the truth here, it's the lack of those other things like rocks and thorns and hardness. See, when you got good soil, it's lacking those other things. I'm sure, I mean, there's always additives you can put in. You know, there's gypsum that you can put in. Miracle grow, come on. Who's ready for a little miracle grow? We need some, right? But good soil had the lack of those other things. You know, offenses cause rocks in your heart. You focusing totally on the world system and how you're going to prosper in it. You know, We need to say, God, it's you or nothing. God, I'm ready to trust you in every area of my life. See, we've got to start removing those rocks. We've got to start removing the deceitfulness of riches, those thorns, those things that have been overcoming us, those cares of this world. See, and as you remove those things, see, the seed already has a miracle in it. Somebody say the seed has a miracle in it. You know, they found a seed in a pyramid in Egypt, could have been 3,000 years old. They didn't know exactly. They planted it, and it grew. See, there's a miracle in the seed. I mean, this thing is dead. Somebody say dead. And yet, when you plant it in soil and add water to it, life comes to it. It's a miracle every time a plant comes up. And, and so, this seed, if I put it in my soil, the seed Actually, it's the soil of your heart that provides the place for that seed to grow. What are you doing about the condition of your heart as you're planting that? Because if you're full of offenses, you're going to choke it out. That seed's wanting to come up, but the weeds get to it. Come on. When pressure comes on, man, you plant it, you got those rocks in there still, and so as it tries to come up, man, it comes up, but when pressure comes at all and the sun comes up, man, it you're no fruit. So is there things in your heart you are ready to start dealing with? You are ready to start releasing. You're ready to start letting out. Anybody out there, come on. Uh, you all have perfect hearts. So who is it up to to prepare the soil of my heart? That's my job. How many of you ever had a garden? Hoeing and weeding. And digging and planting, that's hard work. 
But if we do that, boy, look what... How, how many have enjoyed some of your harvest for years to come from things you've planted? Or it be crops that keep coming up, whether it be fruit trees that just keep getting more and more every year. So how does one have ears to hear? Anybody? He chooses what he's going to focus on and put value on. You are doing right now, watching, reading, paying attention to what you valued. Say, oh my or oh me. <laughs> and so, if you're not believing this word, you haven't put value on it, you won't be into it. It won't do what God said because you've chosen not to. But if you put it the highest value that this is true, man, I want to have the word produce 30, 60, and 100 fold in my life. You're going to value it and you're going to automatically do it. It's not going to be an if or or. You've got to have a pastor tell you to do it. So we want to get rid of the stones. We want to get rid of the thorns. Come on, those deceitfulness of riches. What determines 30, 60, or 100 fold? When I've seen people that have really said the word is valuable and I put faith in it's going to do what it says it's going to do, and you have an expectation. Somebody say expectation. But you know, most believers don't want to put a lot of expectation out there because they don't want to get their hopes deferred. They don't want to get let down. I've been let down before, and I just don't know if I can handle that pain. No, it's time to get your heart in that place like Abraham. He saw his descendants like the stars and like the sand. I mean, he meditated on it until he, he planted that one seed and it got raised up until now here we are, thousands of years later. We are those stars and are that sand that came up. What are you willing to meditate on, pay attention to? You know, the women's home group right now is doing the, what's her name, Carolyn Leaf, and she's talking about your brain. She's talking about what you're thinking on, how it's directly in correspondence with your heart and what fruit you're going to have. Well, I, I, if you're a wim, woman out there, if you're a guy, maybe they let guys in, I don't know. But if you're a woman in there, man, you need to be a part of this or get the series, let, give your wife, bring it home and start listening to that thing. Come on. I'll leave this last scripture and we're going to pray. Deuteronomy 22, 9, you shall not sow your vineyard with different kind of seed. Lest the yield of the seed which you have sown and the fruit of your vineyard be defiled. Today you're going to go home from here after our time together. And you're automatically, from the moment you leave here, are going to start putting seed into your mind, which eventually will affect your heart. And one of the truths that I've learned is, what crop do I want? What crop do you want? You want good crops, good fruit, fruit that's just branching all over you. Man, it was such a blessing to see what Andrew, his word he's sharing, and God, what God had done, the fruit around him, the school that he created. Man, to watch that fruit. I want that fruit. Not necessarily just like he did it. God's given us a little bit different vision. But he planted it and planted it and planted it and planted it. Today, Father, I pray that we're going to plant good seed. I'm praying for this group of people today, God. We're going to remove all the junk you show us that has been in there, that has lied to us, that has caused us, God, not to experience abundant fruit. Unbelief, you're out of here, you lie. Hopelessness, you're out. Saying, I've got to do it if anything's going to happen. You're a liar, you're out. God, we trust in you and your grace today. We say all things are possible to us that believe, God. I thank you that you meet my need according to your riches, which are infinite, and your goodness and glory. You meet those, God. You meet the needs of this church. It's not for me to figure out all the ways to finance everything in this church, God, but it's your, your plan. So I thank you, God. And I repent, God, if there was areas where cares got in. Anybody with me? We're, we're, we're saying cares get off. You're a liar. You've cheated me from experiencing fruit that remains. So I choose to put your word, God, and then I choose to meditate on it. And then I choose, God, to meditate on it again. And I choose to start planting your word in bigger quantities, God, so I can start experiencing a larger crop. And I 
Sow the word everywhere I go so other people will start getting it, Lord. I am a Johnny Appleseed, Lord Jesus, and I choose to cast it out there so everybody gets some of that and so more people can experience the fruit that comes off of me. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you.